Sweet. Welcome to my whiskey den. And tonight we are starting the first in our series of barrel aging experiments. This one was done by Mike at his house. We're going to let him explain the Lawrence Lafroy combination. Let's get into it. One, two, three. All right, so and you're on. <laughs> <laughs> so th this was uh, actually this is the last experiment that I did in the barrel in a one liter barrel, and the barrel had had uh, port wine in it, uh, and I'd done a couple of uh, experiments Ooh. with adding the port back in after using it again, and um, so this last one I did I had a it it had been seasoned with that port barrel was seasoned with a mix of Lafroy quarter cask and Lafroy ten. And so then I added added just uh, standard uh, Larceny bourbon to it and filled the barrel. And that was in there for about a month. Uh, when I had pulled it out, it was, as I described it, it was the initial flavor was Larceny, but with balls on the back end to it. And then I put it in the bottle and let it marry for about a month in the bottle. And after trying that, it had balanced out quite a bit more. And it was a little more uh, Lafroy on the front end. Um, but now as it's been now a few months more sitting in that bottle, um, it has calmed down on the front end uh, and it's very, because my, my whole thing was I was trying to start to come up with something, well, obviously fun and kind of my own campfire, high West campfire. Okay. Um, yeah. and just to see, see what it was, but it also, it's well, I'm using what I have. I'm not going to go out and go buy stuff. I'm going to do it with what I got and see if, cause you know. You could always spend a lot of money and buy a lot of th fancy things and do it, but I was just trying to see if I could do it with what I had left. I like that. And the, and, and the barrel was on its last legs anyway, so I figured this would be a good way to go out. Yeah, I like the quarter cask and Lafroy 10 combo. The, yeah. Those are a lot of people's two favorite Lafroigs, so mm -hmm. I, yeah. I don't think you get a lot of argument from people on putting those two in a mix. And, and, I, and I call it, because of the mix of Larceny and Lafroig, I call it Lafroig. And, and I, I did test the ABV with the refractometer and it comes out at 46 percent decent decent punch on it yeah all right so what what were your aging times in this how long did the Lafroig spin in the barrel and how long was larceny in the barrel uh the Lafroig had been in the barrel for um three weeks okay. just a hair over three weeks um the larceny it was in it was a month okay it's been a decent amount of time with it you do get the, Lef like you're saying, I get the Lefroy, classic Lefroy note on the tail end of the nose. Right. Like it picks up at the tail end. And and mm. I was, you know, I was leery because I was testing it, you know, every, about every five, six days and seeing what it tasted like. And it did not taste good in the beginning. And it didn't taste good at about half the time. And then as it started getting a little over three weeks, it's like, oh, okay, now we're getting somewhere. And I don't know if it was, if it was, uh, well, I would guess because larceny is fairly mild, but mm, I was, yeah. I was figuring that Lefroy was attacking the larceny and, <laughs> and winning the fight because it, it was, it was, it was like a funky Lefroy, but not, but not a, not a good blue cheese funk. It was just yeah. like something died yeah. <laughs> kind of, kind of funk. <laughs> But that, and that, that's that. I was really surprised. I mean, it took that long to get it to chill out in the barrel, mm -hmm. which is again, I figured it was the last last time that barrel was going to get used. I'll go ahead and see what happens. Larceny's inexpensive, and uh, you know, in a in a fine mild whiskey. But yeah, I think a lot of people just my experience with doing the the finishing and the aging in the mini barrels, and a lot of the chats and a lot of the comments I've seen people talk about how quickly it ru it ruined their whiskey. And I think what they don't do is just give it some more time. I think yeah. they, mm -hmm. like you did, they go a weekend, they taste it. Oh my God, this is crap. Ah, this ruined it. It, you know, it ages it too fast. If it's a brand new barrel, sure. You're going to get a big oak, oak impact fast. But if you're, if you're reusing the barrel, um, I'd be straight up. I've used one liter barrels and I have pushed them to eight months with the whiskey before and I've had really good results. It did not get over oaked. It turned out pretty dang amazing. So I'm not saying you can 
push a date much every single time, but you've just got to work with the right. barrel. And I think one of the keys to that mini barrel too, with uh, keeping it from getting too over oaked, whatever is topping it off a little bit as the, you lose some of the angel share, yeah. add a little bit more. You add some of that young whiskey back in, it starts to blend almost Solera type effect to it. And you okay. end up with a fantastic result. But I just, Mike, when I first poured this, it was, I got the Lafroy, I got the smoke and the peat right off the top and the bourbon. But what I'm smelling right now after a few minutes in the glass, it's reminding me of Icarus. I'm, I'm picking up some of the fruit from the port. That's... And it's got that uh, salty, briny note to it. And I'm sitting here going, holy crap, man. I haven't tasted it yet. But on the nose, I'm going, this is the closest thing to Icarus I've smelled besides Icarus. Wow. And I have to get my ginger wig. Yeah. And, well, and mine's over there. But that's what I was going to say, too. I was like, I can tell that the port was in here. You yes. know, like yeah. it was in the barrel. Like there is some of that coming through that like fruit note um, coming through in, in the in the mid range of it and kind of early on in the nose. So I'm, I'm glad you hit that, too. So you, your barrels, Ben, do you uh, do you rotate them? Typically about every weekend so about every seven days or so i'll give it a quarter turn okay now what what about moving ears around do you change their location i have and, all that? and okay. that was going to be our next question for you is where were you aging this at and so i've experimented from everywhere from my attic to my kitchen cabinet to my garage to the crawl space under my house and I put it on the top of the top of the kitchen cabinet mm -hmm. that is above the refrigerator because it has a pretty good fluctuation in temperature. Yeah, it it gets really warm and then cools off over in that spot. And I thought, well, you know, and and that's one thing you, from my watching other people do this and reading things, you just you got to commit, just commit yourself to doing it, yeah. and I, you don't give up, yeah. but just say I am I am committing this bottle and this bottle to it no matter what happens and just let it ride try it out let it ride see what happens and take notes and just see what you think after it's over you're going to learn something you're either going to learn you screwed up or you did good yeah so it's good to him like it's the science of, of wanting to get in there and try yeah. it and see what happens where right. it's i mean let's be honest we've all bought a bottle and been like Ugh. i mean so yeah just committing one or two that you think are decent in the combination of of layering of flavors that you're trying to achieve of course you you know what do you think like you know some distillers like oh i nailed it fucking first time i got this shit down bullshit you know uh, yeah layering like that just doesn't happen too frequently i mean without like tasting and trying and kind of almost pre-thinking out like maybe two or three barrelings ahead where you're like mm -hmm. i want to do this then we're going to do this and then i'm going to try to pull this off it where like you said, you went to port, was in there. Then you kind of went to the Froig to kind of season it that way. And then the Lawrence yeah. just kind of pulled both of those barrel note flavors out of it. And on this, yeah. I'm getting like a like a buttery note. The fruit. I mean, wow, I got a lot of campfire on that last one. I was in, I was in there deep, though. That kind of made me take a step back. But, yeah, like a, there is like a buttery note I wasn't expecting. The port is coming through, Mike. This and then, is and well then you're, done, man. Then you're getting light, oh, a thanks. light Lafroy, where it's not attacking you, but you're smelling it almost like I, right, like a tamed down storm, almost like a Talisker storm, where the smoke is on the nose is a little more aggressive, but I mean, you're getting brine and smoke on it. I'm getting this cigar is... smoke now mm -hmm. that I'm in here right now. Mm -hmm. Cigar smoke. Like yeah. when yeah. I used to go to soccer games and I'd be playing and you could tell if some guy off the field was, was someone's dad was smoking a stogie. You could smell that loft and over the field. And you're like, what the fuck is going on? That's some, some cool dad. Yeah. Some, <laughs> <laughs> some dad whose wife was standing someplace else. <laughs> some smart dad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Guy standing off over in the corner, not up in the stands, but by the yeah. field, by the fence in the corner yeah. somewhere. But yeah, and I'm getting a cherry note. Yeah, I get, well, I, I get the, I get the like, uh, a little the caramel, which kind of comes out, and I know I get a little bit of that in the quarter cask, but from the from the bourbon, 
but then yeah, then it's pepper, yeah, you know, pepper spice and brine mm. and and just and Lafroy. Wow, even in just in the chew on that, that changed over like fifteen seconds. That I was chewing it, it was buttery, bourbony kind of cherry, and then it started. You could feel it sway into the Lafroy on the second half. Yeah. And that is not an overpower. Damn. Hold on. This here. is beautiful. I mean, nothing's fighting. There, none of the notes are fighting with each other in this. Everything just kind of shifts and transitions in yeah. a nice way. And, uh, the, uh, man. The, it, it, linger, Robert, it lingers on. You, you got somebody to hire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, it, the, the, the finish on it, it lingers, mm -hmm. but it's not like what, what I would like to have. I'd like to have a whiskey that just has a finish that that is very present in there for a long time. And it's... Mm -hmm. It's there, it's residual, but it's not really, it's not as strong a finish as what I would like to have. Um, but I think if I could get this, make this at a higher proof, um, which that would be, that'd be kind of hard. I've, I've looked into doing yeah. that and trying the, you know, the steeping and stuff to try to force, force water out. But I just don't know if I want to do that. No, I, I, don't, I know what you're saying about, it's almost like you're with Lafroy, you're looking to get more of that aggressive tone from it yeah to, to stick around i i think this is much more approachable i mean you're still getting that smoke in the brine peat note in the end really kind of coming through with almost like a caramely almost it's like a caramely finish it's not like a burnt caramel though like you're getting like they roast mm -hmm. it's like you roasted or cooked it over like the smoke or a campfire mm -hmm. the caramel's just mixed in with it but I find this extremely drinkable. If like if someone wasn't used to like a heavy peat or anything like that, I think this would be a nice jump in. Especially if someone let's say someone got frightened by like an art bag or or a Lafroy or something like that, and they were all nervous about going back. This could pull someone back into that really easily. I was gonna say, yeah, this and I think that the the mildness. I think that's the larceny kicking in. Because mm -hmm. it's it's pretty mild approachable. That mm -hmm. caramel that you get, to, to me, it is on the, especially the palate, the af after palate, is um, yesterday's kettle corn tub. Mm. And that's that's what I get out. It's like, it's been cooked in, it's been sitting. It's that residual, mm -hmm. that's residual a great, taste out of it. That's a great explanation for when I was getting it. Because when I first get it in my mouth, I'm getting like big caramel, like a little bit of salty bits to it but not to smoke yet and it's in a like transitions over so yeah. apple and i get like almost like a carameled apple on the front for me in the first like little bit when i get it in my mouth but this is one of the yeah. few that i'm really enjoying chewing on you know like there's Good. stuff progressing as it's going on not as much port on the palate as it is on the nose for me mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I was, yeah but that's that's okay. I mean, yeah, I think, I, I, I think we might have already upset Robert by comparison. <laughs> I think, I think the the port the port is buried more on the palate. It's mm -hmm. adding some, uh, it's adding some layers of richness in there that you you're not just picking up these distinct notes, but it's it's adding depth to it. For me, what's really intriguing on this is, like you said, just a great introduction to Pete and to Isla mm -hmm. in a way because it really tames what I think a lot of people find offensive about Lafroy. Uh, the smoke is there. Uh, there's a little bit of the peatiness is there, but the, like the iodine and the seaweed and the fishy notes that are, that are usually strong in a Lafroy, those have all been like, I don't want to say canceled yeah. out, but they're, they're tamped yeah. down. Yeah. They're way the tamped down, but yeah. And it's, it's just, God, this is beautiful whiskey. <laughs> the, you know, one thing, and it's it's been a while since I've had this. I was trying to remember the things that I liked about it, yeah. and smelling the empty glass, I I do like that. It reminds me of going into um, where you go if you do a whiskey tour, and there's the different levels yeah. uh, when they're all in the uh, in the vats. Mm -hmm. It's like this one smells like this. This one smells like this, and it's just like it's a marriage of all the cereal. And... But yeah, the port the port comes in on the nose so much more. But yeah, this to me yeah, shows you the potential of what you can do with a mini barrel on your own, just yes. creating your own blends, 
uh, adding some more nuance to something and, uh, you know, creating something that's uh, greater than, in my opinion, greater than the sum of its, or, you know, greater than its parts. This, yeah. The whole I'm, of it. It's, it's, I'm not a huge fan of larceny. So this is. Yeah. Well, it yeah. blows well, that and, out of the water, like 10 to one, like not even a chance in the dark like this. And yeah. one of the things when I was looking at it was like the cost overall, the, the, the bottle of quarter cast that I had gotten, I'd gotten it on sale, and I think it was around thirty-five bucks, maybe. Oh, you son of a bitch! So yeah, it, it was. It was, and it was on a road trip, stopped in Wichita, one of the places that um, Scott from Scotch Test Dummies. He's like, "Oh yeah, try this place." Um, and so I had it, the Larceny, which was, um, geez, what was it? Like a one seven five was like thirty some dollars at Costco, um, and the Lafroy ten was given to me. So I'm so I was looking at it, going, "All right." I have almost nothing into this. I can't. I, I can't lose on this. I've got to try it. It's just experiment. Now it would be a lot of fun to try it with a better Lafroy. Uh, it would be fun to try it with an Elijah Craig barrel proof. But I don't think you would get near the result. I think Larceny is is tame enough and yeah. open enough to do things with. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and and the quarter cask. It is my standard. That's my favorite standard Lafroy. I'll yeah. I'll get it over the ten any day. You know yeah, and. Yeah. It, and really maybe better than the 10 cast strength just because it's easier to find and you can find it on sale a lot more. And there's a lot of people that in general, the, the quarter cask is like their favorite Lafroy. Yeah. I mean, maybe like the Carcitas version or something like that where it's special release or something. But I was going to say out of the base core line, I know that the quarter cask is, uh, yeah. it puts 10 run for its money compared to like the triple wood and the other things oh, yeah. that aren't even, aren't even in discussion really. Yeah. But like you said, I think the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof would be too aggressive on the flavors. Yeah. You know, like like you said, this really let uh, let the Lef two different Lafroigs and something else kind of stand up. Like it, it held its caramel, a little bit of yeah. apple, and still a little hint of like that port underneath it. Like Ben said, it's got like an underlayer to it. When you're chewing the uh, chewing it at first, I was getting the caramel, but you're getting that. Like Ben said, it's, it's a depth, like another layer hidden underneath it. And it's yeah. hard to peg, but it's in there. Um, I, yeah, I think Larceny or something, maybe in my head, something else kind of similar to that. Maybe like a, a Basil Hayden that's pretty regular available to a lot of people. Yeah. Just a very friendly whiskey, you know, yeah. where it's not going to be playing star um, to what's going on. But, yeah, no. that, not, no, Larceny's got Larceny's forty six, I think, percent. Mm -hmm. So it's got a, it's got a you know a decent amount of proof to it to to try to hold its own. But it, yeah. but it's it, it's an it's just an easy mild whiskey. I don't think I mean comparatively, um, I'd be interested to try it with Makers. I don't I think Makers just that the rye spice I think would um, I think that'd be a, a that'd be a hell of a fight. <laughs> Some I, Isla whiskey and that heavy rye spice. No, I'm digging the glass. The, I, yeah, even on the even on the nose more so now. I'm still I'm getting like that tobacco note, like mm -hmm. in it pretty prevalently out of this. And I don't get that as I'm, I'm digging this. So uh, yeah. now did now did you when before you put like the port like I don't want to say it, like earlier like we were talking about if you're kind of using the barrel sometimes you'll plan three four steps out maybe not all the time but like have like a progression. When you were, what did you do before the port? I think was there. So before, well, actually, that was the first thing I did with this barrel. I was actually, so I was given four bottles of port from a wine person who found out they didn't like these particular ports. Then they said, is there anything you want to do with these? And I said, yes. So that was, again, I, I didn't have much in it. So I had, I made a, a, a mix of these four ports and put them in the barrel. And then I left that in there the first time for a month. I took that out and then I put the rest back in and okay. and reseasoned it and then pulled those out and mixed the two together and then put more back put more port back in. So it had it all together there was about three months of port being put in there in different okay. types. And okay. she actually has the port that I had pulled out and bottled. She still has that that she hasn't cracked yet. Uh, but that's a blend that had been in the barrel for a long time. And then the first thing that I had, that I had put in there, I had put in um, uh, bourbon blend, um, and that was only in there for like a week. 
and it was just it was way too heavy influence on the port and um and then the next thing that i put in on there was uh, a different blend of lafroig with um i left that in there for a month and then put a, elijah craig and that one which i called elijah Freug, was uh it, better than this as far as an overall whiskey um and that was my first first attempt trying to do a campfire type thing but Elijah Elijah Craig was um, I don't want to say too friendly, but it it played too nice with it. It was, it was a nice with the, the end result was was nice, but it, it had played it played too nice to where it was uh, it didn't try to hold its own. Where I think I think Larceny actually came through a little bit on here. Mm-hmm. Um, the Elijah Craig didn't. They blended really nice, uh, but you kind of you wouldn't know that there was any bourbon in there. Where this one, I think, is especially you're drinking it, you're like, oh okay. Yeah. I, I get the bourbon. Yeah. This, yeah, the Elijah Craig. It didn't. It married really, really well, but it kind of, in a way, got lost because of that. But overall, was pretty good. Okay. How did the Lafroy itself turn out after you had taken that out? So I, I actually still have that, and every now and then I will pull that. It okay. is, uh, it's a, uh, it. I don't want to. I don't want to say it's a woody Lafroy. But mm-hmm. there's, it's got, it's, it's definitely got a stronger oak. But I don't know how much of that is, just the fact that it's a, also a blend of of ten and quarter cask. Yeah. And and how much of that is because it's because it's been in the barrel. But I like it. It's it's a, it's a little, it's a bolder Lafroig in in the oak note, but okay. it's not woody. Okay. Okay. Now I the just... next question I have is, when you're dumping the barrel and you go to refill it. Are you refilling it wet, like you're dumping, you know, whatever's in it, and then turn right around and straight up refill it, or do you give some time for the barrel to dry out? I had let it every time. I'd let it dry just just a little for just a couple of days, okay. not not too much, um, and then did like a a simple rinse on it. But this one, the barrel had been used enough times that uh, the the there was just it was starting to get more leaks on there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, rings were, were falling off and it's like, okay, this thing's been, and, and the worst part was the spigot was failing more than anything else and all around it. And I'm like, all right, this one's just got to go. Just trying to and, oh, oh yeah. I, yeah. And I had done so much of it. So I, when I, after I, I decided I'm not, okay, I'm done. I'm done with this barrel. And I take it and I set it down on the counter. And when I set it down on the counter, a couple of rings fell off and then it just like popped open. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> okay, good call. <laughs> <laughs> You've lived a good life, so yeah. it's time to go. But well, it was, you know, um, a, a little over a year worth of service doing things with it, yeah. which I thought was pretty good. Yeah, that's, that's it, it's, it's, you get a good return on investment for these mini barrels because yes. typically twenty five, thirty bucks for a one liter, I think, is about yeah. average going cost. And I've had as many as uh, I guess eight different refillings in a barrel before I've retired it. So, um, you know, it, it's a, it's a spreadsheet nerds dream to plan yeah. out, you know, what you can do with these things. Cause the potential is huge for, okay, if I yes. put this in it, then I'm going to refill it with this and I'm going to refill it with this. And then the next thing to see how each one impacts the other. But, um, and I love how like each, each time you take it out is like its own kind of special release. But the next time you're like, but I'm still yeah. trying, I'm still trying to layer yeah what's going on right each time i'm I'm getting something unique out of it right yeah fucking yeah right and that, that's that's the thing that i thought was really cool these are all these are experiments that you could you could do again but you're never going to duplicate it right it doesn't sure. even if you started from scratch you're never going to be able to do it again so but it's fun it's like this was fun i learned a lot yeah now what would i do differently mm-hmm. yeah and and i've for the most part tried to keep it keep the the cost low enough that it's like i know i could redo this pretty easily without going eh, right yeah. and that's where i think you get the biggest uh return on investment is trying to improve something that's bottom shelf or even mid-tier yeah. a little bit and uh taking taking that to the next level and yeah. that's that's where i've had the biggest success with it but there's so many little variances that you can play with and it's like what what i was asking you did you refill it wet or did you let it dry a little bit because you can take and refill it wet and you're going to get a much bigger impact from that mm-hmm. previous spirit yeah. on what you just put in there versus if you let it dry for a day or two or even a week or a month 
and then go and refill it. And then that's going to have a more subtle effect to it. Yeah. So depending on what, what your goals are, what, what you want to achieve with it, there's, there's so many things you can play with. And I think for me, it, it really taught me about what people at the distillery, when they're, you know, planning out things with barrels and the impact of, of what the barrel can do on a, you know, this is on a micro level, think about on a big level, you know, it, mm -hmm. it, it's amazing. And the fact that they yeah. can sit here and pull off year after year release, somebody like Jim Beam or Wild Turkey or whoever, and have that consistency when all yeah. these barrels are so, di individual barrels are so different and the, how they treat the spirit is different. And the fact that they can create something that has such consistency year after year after year, that to me is just, that's amazing. Well, and then yeah. I think that's a tribute at that point to not only that, but the head distiller or master blender that's there. Yeah. That's like, you can taste the barrel and you're like, we need half of this and half of barrel 186, three fourths of barrel 186 and only yeah. a quarter of this one there. Right. We, yeah. we, we hit the number or like, like, I think that's incredibly impressive. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I have a question for you then about the, well, a couple of questions. So the, uh, the angels here are coming off when this had, uh, when it was filled with Lafroy, mm. by the time I was done with the Lafroy and I did, I, you know, turned it pretty regular just to try to keep every bit of the, of the barrel soaking up. Yeah. Um, uh, I probably lost overall a quarter of the barrel. Okay. Um, to to the share, um, which which again I I was expecting to I was glad that I did, but I put it in a place with high fluctuation because I wanted to try to have it be close enough to you know to a, a, a real Rick house yeah. <laughs> even even though it was my kitchen. Um, but I was curious what what have you run into? It's, it's very wildly because depending on where I've put it at um, and what you're going to find, you know, I'd ask Robert Licorice the same question we had him on about the larger the barrel, the yeah. less angel share you experience. And um, same thing with these. So with the one liter barrels, I've experienced the most angel share. Um, and so when I was using it in the attic, a lot more heat influence because I think that was around April or May when I tried that around those months and here in South Carolina it's pretty warm so I think within a matter of weeks I was down to half a barrel I lost a ton um, I then moved it to under the house to slow that down uh, where this temp temperature stays more constant the humidity is a little bit more constant down there um, and I it slowed it down so basically i was able that batch that aged for eight months and hmm. uh, i once it was down to half i topped it back off again moved it under the house and then from there over the eight months of time probably lost about half again hmm. instead of just a, in a few weeks and then last year i had a couple of barrels that i was doing buffalo trace uh, white dog and i had those in my garage and they spent the the vast majority of time in the garage and probably lost about a quarter to a third of the barrel overall. Okay. okay. Um, I only, you know, I didn't have to top them off very much, just a few times uh, and didn't lose as much. But the interesting thing, the barrels from the previous years that I used under the house, the proof went down. So they went from about a, because what I had done, some of the research I had done into it, um, I'd added a little bit of Everclear to it to bump the proof up on some bourbon that I was aging and uh, to basically kind of be able to extract different things from the wood so it wouldn't get overly oaked. Mm -hmm. Well, those had dropped after the eight months time. By the time I bottled it, it was 94 proof. Went from 128 to 94 proof. Hmm. So the Buffalo Trace, I think that was 124 either 114 or 124 proof when it went in the barrel by the time i bottled it it had gone up to 138. oh and that one only spent maybe four or five six months i think at the most um in the barrels and i was using two liter barrels i went to a larger barrel two liter barrel but the proof jumped way up wow. and so that's what i sent you guys some i think some samples uh i had the 
bottled it or barreled it, bottled it at 132, brought it down to 132, then I had one at 110, and then watered it down to 100 to see what the differences would be. I played around with those a little bit. But um, so, yeah, depending on where you put it and, and all, you're going to get some different results. And so you just have to kind of watch it and monitor it. Yeah. Well, that is excellent. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm yeah. getting, I'm getting this cigar, this lovely cigar flavor in my mouth yeah. from this. This is, I'm enjoying yeah. this. Oh yeah, so, good. So I think this was. Uh, this sample kill is going to, going to die quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, maybe I should hold on to this. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens. That one, that one might disappear rather quickly here, but uh, I think that's probably good for our first. Uh, little episode into our barrel aging series that we're, we're going to be talking about different stuff. That was a, that was a hell of a kickoff, Mike. Uh, I think next time we'll be looking at something that Ben did uh, with an Appleton Estate rum. Uh, am, am I right in that one? Is that what you yeah. had there first is rum and then you did a bourbon finish on it? Well, no, that's the barrels I just told you about that had the Buffalo Trace White Dog. Yep. So those were aged first, and then I've refilled it with this rum. Okay. Sweet. And now that barrel is filled with Ardbeg. Oh shit! Okay, right. now now this is this. I'm excited <laughs> about the, like I was talking the layering experience going on here, uh, with the rum, and then kind of kicking back to that. That sounds like it's. Were you in, looking for that kind of drum finish? Uh, basically yeah i'd had in mind i wanted to kind of see if i could replicate a drum but where some people were i think disappointed with the with the drum because it didn't have enough of a rum impact that's what i wanted to see if i could kind of take take the the art bag to the next level with with the rum yeah. impact and and do that and I, i'll just go ahead and say a few weeks in already and it's uh god I, you look I excited. Better than it, um, but I, I think if I had my choice right now, I would take the one I've got in my barrel between the two. Yeah, I like that. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it a lot. But uh, no, I don't want to keep everyone on here. But uh, hey, this this was a great kickoff. We're going to be looking at more and more kind of barrel aged projects from us or maybe from someone else out there that's got something kind of going on, history of it. And I know at least maybe once or twice we'll talk about some places to get barrels from because yeah. it's a fantastic thing to try. But if you don't know where to get them from, it makes a big difference. So um, we'll take a look at that too. But uh, from our den, each and every one of ours, to your den at home there, the little bit that I have left in here before I fill it up and drain the whole rest of this thing. Uh, <laughs> remember, it's not the size of the den that matters. It's the love of whiskey. Cheers, everyone out there. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Oh God, that knocked it out of the park, Mike. Fucking love that thing, man. <laughs> Let's get into it. One, two, three.